Jared Polin Fronos Photo.com. And I have another image from the Nikon D4S, but this isn't just about the D4S. I kind of turned this into a uh, how to get the proper exposure using the exposure triangle in a situation like this. Uh, I honestly wrote about 1,200 words over on the website. You can click on the link down below to read a full-on article that goes through why I set the camera this way, what settings I used, uh, and then the mentality and the theories behind the exposure triangle. And honestly, you can use all the information there for whatever you want to shoot. So let me do my best here in this video portion to give you some more insight into what went on in this image. So we can see that this was shot at 1 800th of a second at f3.5 ISO 5000 at 200 millimeters using the 70 to 200 2.8 Nikon VR2 with the VR off uh, and, and the Nikon D4S. The focus mode was the new group area AF, which is fantastic in the Nikon D4S. Uh, and the VR, I said VR was off. What else did I say? Metering focus mo metering mode, we're gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, but let's break down this particular image. I would call this an almost perfect ice hockey shot. I don't know if there is a such thing as the perfect shot, but this was out at 200 millimeters. So I'm filling the frame. Sure, you could get tighter if you had something longer. I will not crop. This is not a croppable image in my opinion. And if you were to sell this image to this person and they wanted an 8x10, you have the perfect amount of space on both sides to leave it for enough room for cropping. So I think that this is the right uh, angle to do it, in my opinion. Now, I love where the player is. If you break it down, you have almost the same amount of room here on the left as you do on the right. The subject isn't right in the middle, but the stick extends him out there. What's important in sports is that you have the puck or the object that is the kind of the, the purpose of the game there. The puck is right there on the other side of the stick. Boom. We've got that. I didn't cut off any limbs. His head's up in the air. Now, that's not something that you have control of, but his eyes are forward as he's skating down the ice you can see from the pictures before because I did a little bit of a rapid fire none of these are as good he's obviously not that good of a skater you can tell from where his head is and how it goes down when he's looking at the uh, the player on defense but it just so happens that right here it all came together he looks like he's I don't want to say Sidney Crosby because he's a big baby uh, but he looks like he knows what he's doing here so this, to me, is right on for an action shot, especially for hockey. But you may want to know, how did I arrive at these settings in the exposure triangle? So I'm going to explain all of these things. What I used to, why I set it, when I set, or what I chose to set first. In this instance, I chose shutter speed. Now, this has nothing to do with getting the exposure right at first. It's just setting the shutter speed, because I knew I wanted to set it at... Uh, I wanted a faster shutter speed. One eight hundredth of a second was pretty darn fast. Then I knew that I wanted to shoot at 3.5. I didn't want to shoot wide open or I didn't want to shoot higher than that. I chose 3.5 because that's going to give me a little bit more of a leeway when it came to my focus. So I could have his eyes in focus and maybe this cage, which isn't, you don't want the cage in focus, but in here it actually found the eyes, which is pretty darn cool. So that's in focus. That's really an important thing. And then the ISO is what tied everything together. Initially, I started at 6400 ISO, but everything was a little too bright. Um, so it was a little, it was letting too much light in. Then you have to ask yourself, if I'm letting too much light in, what do I have to compensate for in order to get the proper exposure? Before I get into that, some people ask, well, what metering modes were you using? Were you on spot? Were you on matrix? Were you on evaluative? Were you on center weighted? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I must have been on Matrix, but I wasn't looking at the meter. The reason I wasn't looking at the meter is because I'm shooting hockey. And with so much white in this frame, a good 75% of this frame is encompassing white. And if I let the camera pick for me, it would shoot the shutter speed up higher because it would want to compensate. So this is the type of image you would end up with. It would look like this. I'm actually going to take a picture of that. Let's see this so I can use it as a sample image. This is what it would end up looking like if we changed our exposure. Now back to getting it. Boom. And by the way, if you look over here in the exposure, I didn't change that at all. So theoretically, this, this is a JPEG. I shot RAW plus JPEG. And at the time of making this, Lightroom doesn't accept the RAW files from the D4S. This is pretty darn right in the camera. By the way, that's where, where did it start? Let's see. 
Okay, that's where it started, pretty darn flat, and then just boomified slightly. So getting it right in the camera, to me, is still not an option. I mean, yes, you want to get it as close as possible, but then tweaking that file, in this case, I was tweaking the JPEG. I would love to tweak the raw, raw file, and I will be able to. But back to the main points. Um, that's why you set it. You, you set manual exposure, and I don't even worry about the uh, the metering mode for something like this because I want to get it locked in. So I got my set shutter speed set, I got my aperture set, and then I take a test image and I did it at 6400 and it was too bright. So if I dropped my, uh, I, in order to get it less bright, I could, let's see, I could bump my shutter speed up. Yes. I'm just confusing myself. I could raise my shutter speed, which cuts back on the amount of light getting let in. That's a pretty good option. Uh, I could do that. I could raise my aperture from 3.5 to 4 or 4.5. But as you start to do that, this distracting stuff, this exit sign, this video game back here may start to become more prevalent in the image and doesn't isolate my subject as much as I want. Remember, just because you have a 2.8 lens doesn't mean you have to shoot at 2.8. It gives you the ability to do that. But in this situation, I didn't have to. Now, the other thing I could do, being that I was at 6400 ISO, to cut back on how sensitive to light my, my uh, sensor is I can lower the ISO making it less sensitive to light meaning that should compensate enough to give me what I was looking for now for anybody out there who says that 5000 ISO is too high it doesn't matter as much today because even the entry-level cameras for example a Nikon D3300 can shoot 6400 ISO without batting an eye but remember, better glass still helps you drop that ISO. So instead of being at 5.6 at 12,800, I can go to F4, and then I can go to F2.8. Uh, Those are two stops of light. So instead of shooting to get the same result at 12,800, cut it in half. You're at 6,400. Cut it again. You're at 3,200. So just think of that. Stops of light. That's what we're talking about here. So that's pretty much breaking down this image. Um... I also want to talk about the angles are pretty, the lines are pretty darn straight. You can see that he's straight right here. I have him straight. If it was a Dutch angle, it would look like crap, and it would look like he's either skating uphill or downhill. That isn't really what you're looking for, in my opinion. So that is pretty much breaking down this image, uh, start to finish the mentality that went into getting those settings where they were. Uh, I rely on my knowledge of shooting sports or, or getting my exposure right in the past or, or from a lot of practice. And I do look at the back of the monitor. I personally don't use histograms because in this case, if you look at the histogram, technically that's not a good histogram because there's a major spike over here when a major spike over here and they kind of want you to have that major spike in the middle. I don't bother with that. I do look at the screen, the monitor. I have it set to uh, zero. I don't have it too bright. I don't have it too dark. And I know that it's going to be darn close. And in this case, it really was. So I use that to determine which way I need to go with my shutter speed, aperture, or ISO. So yes, long discussion. Wrote a long article. Feel free to read it. This is a ton of information. So people can stop, well... People are going to bitch no matter what, but this is just saying it like it is. So this is what you have. This is breaking down that shot from the D4S, but giving you a look into the exposure triangle and how I built everything, how I built the exposure to get this type of image. So there you guys have it. Please be sure to go ahead and read that article. It's one of the longer ones that I've written, but I think you could take that information with you and apply it to just about anything you want to shoot. There you have it, Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. If you found this video to be very helpful or you still had questions about your exposure triangle or the fundamentals that I talked about, please go ahead and click over here to check out a preview of the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide to Getting Out of Auto. It's going to get you out of auto and into manual, taking full control of your camera to give you better results because you totally can do this. So it's a three hour guide that's going to save you a ton of time. And in this case, time is money because it puts all the information right at your fingertips in one fell swoop to get everything that you need to do to get out of auto. So go ahead, click over there to check out a preview, a free preview of it. And if you like it, you can pick one up and there you have it. Thanks. And we'll see you.